the last two years we've seen COVID uh, and it has gone down. Are we over when it comes to COVID? Have we won the battle yet? That's a good one. Uh, that's a good question. I think where we are, we are different from where we are coming from. And definitely the global world has seen reduction in the number of cases, reduction in the number of people who are dying, uh, particularly in the second quarter of 2022. However, we know that uh, the virus is always changing. Uh, there's always new mutations. We saw the rise of Omicron variant, uh, uh, especially uh, sweeping uh, from last year and the most of the early this year. And what we have seen with the virus is that because it's always changing, it's finding pathways through the immunity wall we have created from vaccination to crack that wall. We think that we've done well in creating a big wall for immunity, especially against hospitalization, against, uh, against severe disease, but not against infection. So you still see infections, but we are hoping that they are becoming less severe uh, so that at least the, 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 the health system uh, 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 is unlikely to collapse. However, in the past two, three months, there's been a rise of the new variants of, of, of Omicron. Uh, the, the BQ.1, BQ.1.1, the XBB, you have heard about them making noise in, in, uh, in, 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 in Singapore, and also some variants of Omicron, the PE.7 making noise in China, and some variants making noise. Those are beginning to show an increase in the number of infections, and we are worried about them. Uh, how worried are we? We don't have a lot of information. But what we have seen is the number of cases are beginning to go up. But what has been comforting is that most of those, although they're a little bit severe, uh, but none of them, not all of them really leads to hospitalization, which means that we have created a good cushion for ourselves through either being exposed to the virus that produces uh, immunity or vaccination. Uh, however, we are worried that if immunity begins to wane, especially people who didn't take boosters or didn't complete their doses, that might be a gateway for the virus. So I think that's important for people to realize that we need to vaccinate. We, 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 we need to work against this virus. What we've done in the past, when we vaccinated uh, against major diseases, what helped us is that we were able to eliminate some of the diseases by making sure that we build good head immunity so that we are not passing the virus from one person to another. When you pass the virus from one person to another, uh, that allows the virus to continuously gain an advantage for transmission or vaccine escape. So I think that's very, very important. We are concerned. Uh, should we say um, the level of concern, I think it's, I would say if you had to gauge the level of concern in the middle of there, I think we were very low concerned. I think people were starting to drop back. Some of the measures were starting to relax. But I think I would be cautious at an individual level that now we are pushing these measures back to individuals to take care of their health. It's difficult to lock down. It's difficult to shut down economic activity, social activity. It's very difficult. So what we need now is to take the battle to the people, to say, whatever you do, be conscious that COVID is not gone. Basically, we have not eliminated COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, the virus that COVID causes COVID-19. It's still around us. It's still growing. We, what we have done is we have relieved ourselves of the burden of deaths and hospital collapse. How long will it last? We need to be careful. If we roll back too quickly, we may be caught napping when we get another wave of the virus. You see what's happening in China. Uh, you see what's happening in parts of Europe, that they're beginning to get so much pressure in their hospitals because of these new variants, BQ, BQ, and others. So I'm concerned that if we let the guard, especially during the holiday season, uh, a latent guard, we may have a backlash, God forbid, because we, we were under pressure and took resources from other programs uh, to, 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 to fight against COVID. 
Now, when we are trying to go back to those other programs and COVID comes back again, I wonder if we will be ready, but we need to be cautious. We are talking in the health space, how do we, how do we integrate the COVID interventions into routine care? How do we prepare ourselves for pathogen X or the next pandemic? How do we integrate it? Because it's not sustainable to have uh, a program just focusing on this uh, uh, pathogen alone, because we still have TB, we still have HIV, we still have to work with malaria, we still have diarrhea diseases. So we need a systematic approach. So that's why we are taking the battle back to the people, community health, and say, help us. Keep your hands clean. Uh, if you are sick, seek medical attention. And if you are positive with COVID, protect others by either getting vaccination, masking up, and not exposing others unnecessarily. You, you mentioned the issue of China. Now that China is opening up, should countries be worried? I think countries should make sure that they step up efforts that they began. Uh, I'm glad that uh, countries like this one, the vaccination rates have gone up. And what we need to do now is to make sure that the, the people complete their doses, those who have not finished, and the posters. If we do that, we are reducing the chances of going back to those Delta days. But if we don't, then that's, the, that's where the, the challenge may be. Should we be concerned? Yes, we are a global village. If there is something happening in another part of the world, invariably because we are interconnected, it may affect us. Uh, that's why we are pushing for integration of services, integration of, of care, uh, uh, and not letting the gut down. So we need to engage our communities again and say, hey, we have relaxed, but make sure that be aware that COVID is still here. Uh, and uh, we see it in the news, we see what's happening in China, we see the hospitals are getting pressure again, and we shouldn't allow it to happen in our places because of the limited resources that we have. We don't want to now spend more resources trying to keep people uh, in hospitals. We should be concerned. Um, uh, should, uh, we should be concerned, yes. Uh, we should be thinking about what happens if we get another wave. How do we prepare ourselves? And I'm glad that within the health community uh, in Southern Africa, in Botswana, in Zimbabwe, people have been talking about pandemic preparedness and making sure that they establish sustainable ways of responding to pandemics, not knee-jerk reactions. Uh, and those structures are beginning. They are still infant, so that's why I'm saying we should be concerned, so that we are not caught napping about what's happening uh, uh, um, in, in, in China. So we, we, lastly, we, we, we are coming from a holiday where this is the first post-COVID, so people traveled a lot. And already you hear people talking about, no, I flew, but I tested negative. Should this worry uh, the, the, the health uh, sector? Yeah, the tests are good, but you know they are not 100%. They are very, very good. Uh, uh, and if you still feel that you are not well, even after testing negative, the health workers know uh, that you may have COVID even though you tested negative. And that's important, uh, that they can do x-ray and check. Uh, you experience any problems with your lungs or respiratory infections uh, like pneumonia, then they will treat it appropriately. Uh, and I think it's very important. I know people like treating themselves, but if the flu is very severe, go to the hospital because it may not be just the flu. It may be COVID with the detection escape. Because variants are busy escaping detection. The extent at which they detect escape, we do not know. But we have seen people who have, especially rapid, negative rapid, but with COVID. If you have symptoms, make sure that you seek healthcare as soon as possible. Because it may not just be flu. I think that's an important message so that you get help early. If you go when it's too late, you may risk that your recovery may be slow uh, or compromised. And we, we don't want situations like that. And many people uh, that experience very, very severe, most of them took it very lightly as an ordinary flu, home remedies, well, they help. 
but be careful that when you start getting uh, classical symptoms of COVID, uh, shortness of breath, uh, you know, you are losing your chest, uh, your chest and uh, you, you, sometimes the, it overlaps a lot with flu, so you are better seeking health care as soon as possible. Uh, this is the final question. Yeah. Yeah. From a personal level, mm. what would you say has been a lesson for you uh, throughout this COVID pandemic? I think throughout COVID, I think COVID taught us that we need to think in other ways innovatively. COVID taught us, uh, for me personally, COVID taught me to evaluate what is important in life. And uh, I think you begin to value, you, 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 your attachment to things goes away. You begin to value your contribution to society, your contribution to your family. Uh, you begin to value people around you because, you know, we lost people very fast uh, in a very short space of time. We didn't have closure. Uh, I couldn't bury my own uncle because of restrictions. And that, like, caused a lot of, of, of uh, 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 issues in our society. So COVID taught us to evaluate. Two, COVID taught me that we need to have solutions in Africa to generate our own tests. We are running out of tests, right? We are running out of medicines. We are running out of vaccines. So it's a wake-up call. It's not just the government. Uh, it's, it's, it's all of us together as a collective, the scientific community, the business community. We need to work together to provide solutions for our people. I think we need innovative solutions to improve our livelihood. Uh, we need scientific innovations, but also social innovations. COVID impacted the ordinary people in the streets that couldn't fend for themselves. You look down, you can go to work, me, I can go to work. What is someone who is making a living there? So we need social interventions. People were breaking down, nervous breakdown. The value of making sure that you have psychosocial support, psychosocial innovation, interconnected of people. And then you stop looking at health as just the curative aspect, medicine and stuff. Health is the totality of either physical, emotional, spiritually, and it's very important. Of course, as a believer, it has taught me to be strong in faith because people depend on you to support because that gives you hope to fight for tomorrow and gives you wisdom to think in a different way. It's not just positive thinking, no. God has given us the ability the energy, the strength, and the wisdom for things to improve our society and our lives. And every step you take, you ask for wisdom because we don't have solutions for everything. COVID taught us we don't have answers for everything. The world did not have answers for everything. So it's time to harness our connectivity and our wisdom and the knowledge that we get from God to provide solutions for people. I think we, we, we learned a lot. And as a scientist, we learned that Science and innovation can happen from Africa. And the world is celebrating Africa for some of the work that we have done in COVID. But we need to encourage our young people from the grassroots that it's possible. There is nothing impossible. Exposure is important, of course. Mentorship is important, of course. So we've learned that we need to, to really move faster. Uh, uh, in, in all these areas. So I think COVID was a wake-up call. The health systems, we need to build robust health systems. Uh, uh, I mean, the world over, there is no country that was not shaken. So world over is, we need to prepare ourselves how to protect our people. Some have medical insurance, some don't have medical insurance. How to protect our people from the wide spectrum of the society. I think that's a... That's important lessons that we, 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 we learned from, from COVID. And we also learned that we are a global village. So you cannot say, uh, I'm going to sort out my own country. You lock down, the other country doesn't lock down. Within a few days, you have the infection. So thinking and talking together as a global network has become very important. You know, the viruses don't know passports. They don't respect your borders. So that we need to talk to each other. When we are implementing lockdowns or interventions, or lockdowns don't work anyway, but implementing interventions, it needs to be at least coordinated. And I mean, no one had that solution, but I think now every 
all governments are beginning to think about pandemic preparedness, science and innovation. They are beginning to think of how do we do homegrown solutions. Uh, uh, we saw people producing, like uh, here, producing their own oxygen, producing their own liquid nitrogen, making sure they produce their own. Some people are producing masks. Some people are producing uh, uh, different uh, uh, innovations. I think that they say necessity is the mother of, inv of, 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 of invention. I think that taught us that we have the ability. We just need to be more agile, work together, harness our own capabilities, challenge our universities to be centers of these innovations. And I think that's, those are great lessons for our country.